Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast with Bill and Akram. We are here for our Wanda, I'm going to say WandaVision, <laughs> <laughs> our like Doctor it. Strange Multiverse of Madness review. Um, what a movie, guys. I There's a lot to unpack um, from this movie, but um, Akram, you are notorious for spoilers, so <laughs> we're going to keep this first part spoiler free, but um, since you just saw the movie, I want to hear your general impressions yeah i thought i like usually mcu stuff uh they give a lot to the greater good uh, you know i guess but you know as we saw moon knight they kind of were like their own thing and here surprisingly it kind of felt like their own thing i mean they took elements from from different media from the mcu um but did it add some stuff to the mcu maybe maybe not um but I thought the movie was a blast. I thought it was really fun um, for what it is. I, I wouldn't say it's the best MCU film um, or my favorite, but I I feel satisfied from from what I've seen. And I think the lead up to certain characters uh, doing what they did uh, was handled well uh, from Disney Plus shows as well. So, but, you know, tell us what you thought. Yeah, like I said, I was surprised. I initially thought um, I wasn't going to like it. Uh, I think the trailer actually misled me into thinking it was a different plot um but then when i actually started watching it and seeing how events unfold it was actually a completely different narrative than what um i originally uh perceived it as but i think the characters were great obviously benedict cumberbatch as strange killed it he feels like a very not different strange but i don't know he's he feels like more comfortable now he's like yeah. he's not as like strict i guess as we've seen in other iterations um and uh elizabeth olsen obviously is wanda she killed it literally uh, <laughs> <laughs> um i forget her name uh so she gomez as america chavez she was great um and obviously benedict wong um always a blast but yeah um i definitely loved this movie i think the reason i kind of had low expectation was because i didn't i wasn't a big fan of the first doctor strange movie it just was kind of like lackluster for me um, but obviously, we've seen him in better movies like uh, Endgame and uh, Spider-Man: No Way Home. But this was a blast. Uh, it was definitely I had I had some different expectations, but it subverted them in a way. So um, we might as well get into the spoiler section of this review because there's a lot of spoilers. We can't really talk about this movie without the spoilers. Um, so just be warned from here on out, there will be spoilers, guys. But <clears throat> yeah, when we first start out, obviously. Um, Strange and America Chavez, they're they're running through the multiverse and they're trying to find this book, the uh, the book of Ashanti, I believe is it's yeah. um so basically her powers is that she can uh she's the only I guess variant of herself, right? Because we've seen like variants of Strange, of Loki, Wanda, but America Chavez is the only, as far as we know, uh person of herself in the multiverse and she has the ability to jump through the multiverse uh and then they're running from this demon uh which we find out is actually just a, a henchman for the bigger villain um that's trying to take her power but i thought the action scenes were really great i think the visual effects obviously killed it i think like if we had seen like dr strange like like before like i guess like 2008 or like long time ago it would definitely not have been as as visually like grandest scale as it was um in this movie um but then so this strange that we see in the beginning is uh the defender strange that we saw in the trailer uh with the different suit on with the with the ponytail that he even yeah <laughs> um so unfortunately that strange dies trying to say and it's interesting too because he was trying to um well he was trying to save uh america but he was also trying to take her power which was killing her in a way so it's it's just interesting to me, like, the different sides of Strange that we see in all his different variants, because there are some that are more willing to take the risks to, for the greater good, and there's some that are more compromising. And we kind of saw that in, um, what was it, Infinity War, mm -hmm. when he told uh, Tony Stark, he's like, if it's between the kid and you, like, I'm going to do what I have to do. Right. Um, but obviously we saw how that uh, unfolded. But this Strange was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. Um, but he dies uh, fighting that demon thing, and then she gets scared. So apparently her power works through when she gets really scared. 
uh, she can open portals uh, through the multiverse. And that's actually um, how she lost her mother, uh, which was revealed in a later scene. So then she ends up in uh, 616, which is confirmed, uh, which is the main MCU continuity timeline <clears throat> where R. Strange is. And this scene, well, he wakes up from the dream, so he sees all of that in a dream sequence. And I love how they, they like uh, depict dreams in this movie because it's kind of like dreams are like the, the visions of your different selves in different universes because there's always like that theory that like dreams are like uh it's either like you're looking into your subconscious or you're like looking into different past lives or something so i love how they they sprinkle that in there it's like it makes you wonder like like all the different like people that you see in your dreams like maybe i'm actually like rich and successful maybe (laughs) maybe our podcast is like big somewhere (laughs) but (laughs) but um yeah it was cool and then we see christine back uh rachel uh adams she's getting married in church and then strange is uh going to her wedding and then they kind of like they kind of like meet up again and they're like you know catching up and uh one of the big themes of this movie was um she asked she asked stevens like um are you really happy and i think that resonated with me a bit it's like because also it, it, it we're gonna get to wanda in a bit but <clears throat> like the big motif of this movie was like how far like are you willing to change things for your own happy? Like, are you willing to accept loss? Or are you willing to be selfish, I guess, for your own happiness in a way? Um, but yeah, so then America falls through this portal, and then we see this big uh, tentacle monster. I think that was... Uh, Gargantos. Gargantos, thank you. Um, and then she's trying to, like, escape, and then Wong shows up, and they have this big battle, um, which is really cool. And I love how, like, Strange just, like, flew off that balcony and he's like already like in his prime like the way they they showed his suit like he's already like he's already like got that avenger swag with him now Mm -hmm. so it's so cool that he's so like comfortable now and it's like it's like they don't even hide their identities anymore (laughs) it's just kind of like you know they just show up and they're yeah they're the avengers and i love how the like the husband of um christine was like oh yeah i'm a big uh, dr strange fan too (laughs) (laughs) so that was funny um but yeah so then it's it's revealed as after that fight with the the big monster thing and uh, by the way the violence in this movie was like so off scale this shit made moonlight like look like pg-13 moonlight why are you try to act all tough moonlight, chiron <laughs> yeah i know no i really did no, literally it was moonlight after that cause <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, what did you think of, like the violence in this film because it's definitely like a sam raimi uh, style oh yeah for sure i think yeah it fits his style um and uh, and i think out of anything that probably introduces uh something uh to the mcu you know i thought moon knight would introduce that but i guess it just introduced it like gods uh you know egyptian gods and whatnot and different power scale scaling um so here i think it introduced uh well at least we get to see more universes right but it also introduced uh you know kind of like a narrative element which is the violence um and and it, it it provides shock value right and i guess this could lead way to making a daredevil show uh more violent and you know because even like you could do violence with like pg-13 setting because expendables 3 i remember it, like people were getting obliterated but there was no blood right so here there was blood like at sometimes and i was just really shocked i was like damn this is uh you know, sometimes it feels like it's rated R or something or, or it shouldn't be like a movie. It feels like it should probably be like a late night Disney Plus show. So I was I was really uh, uh, relieved to see that they didn't hold back, uh, especially with Sam Raimi. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> you can definitely like see his style. Like he's got like little campy moments, but then there's definitely like the gore aspect to it. But um, I actually like the Sam Raimi moments more than I actually did the Marvel moment. I think like I think like um. I don't know. There's some. It's a weird balance of like his style and the way that the MCU is set up because they're trying to be safe for for younger audiences. So I think there was a little inconsistency in that, and just it felt like two movies trying to like fight for each other. But I, I overall, I, I liked it. Um, but yeah, going back. So then after they kill that monster thing. So then you know America, she's sitting down with Doctor Strange, and she reveals you know the multiverse, and she's trying to explain everything. And then, um, so they find out that this monster is, uh, there's runes on it, so it's like witchcraft. So they go to the only person they know that really knows witchcraft, which, of course, is Wanda. 
and she's on her little, I guess, like retreat campsite where we're <laughs> from mm. the end of uh, WandaVision. So they set this up so, like, it was such a slow build. I love how they did this. So he goes to her, f- her for help, right? And he's like explaining everything. And he, and he doesn't even mention America's name yet. He's like, yeah, there's this girl. She can travel to the multiverse. Uh, but we t- need to keep her safe because there's somebody out there trying to get her. And then she lets slip that she knows her name. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, I didn't mention her name. And then that's when we get the <laughs> the slow, like, like Mustafar, like, looking, <laughs> like, par- like, all the trees are dead. Like, yep. I love how they set this up, too, because, like, the whole Garden of Eden thing that Wanda had was such a great metaphor for, like, depression and loneliness. It's like she's, like, trying to cover her, like, insecurities behind this veil of, like, like happiness. Kind of like how she did with, uh, was it Westview? Right. Like how she was trying to paint it in her own image. So, and also she's having, like, these dreams and visions also of, like, her other selves uh, with her, her kids that exist in other universes. So tell me what you thought seeing, like, Wanda back. Well, I thought that the second they mentioned... Or, you know, kind of like a mention to Wanda. I like that we got to hear the WandaVision, like, theme play, like the little piano note. I thought that was really a nice callback. Um, and seeing her again, I I really thought at first uh, from the trailers and all that it was just going to be, like, an evil strange that was terrorizing people. And that movie was going to be about him, like, yeah, no matter what he does, he destroys things. And to some degree, that, that kind of, like, was discussed in this film. But to see Wanda, I thought she, like really left off well you know after wandavision i thought she learned her lesson um so i don't know if that makes re-watching wandavision like a problem um because at the end of the day i guess agatha harkness was actually a hero you know uh like she wasn't anything compared to one of two evils i guess (laughs) right i mean you live long enough to see yourself become a hero i guess at this at this stage but um yeah uh, elizabeth olsen is is great here of course as always um and uh in a way, like, it's it's kind of like a sickening thought, you know? Um, but also, like, she was right. Her kids do exist in other universes. Now, I don't know in those other universes she created those kids as well. Um, or they just actually do exist. Um, that's still to be discussed at a later date. But from what I see right now, I, I thought it was a pleasant surprise to see her. Not a pleasant surprise, but it was pleasant to see her again, but at the same time, it was kind of annoying. I was like, bitch, you know that you made those kids, right? You made them up, <laughs> and you about to kill everyone for it. Didn't you right. learn your lesson on WandaVision or say That's your goodbyes? She wasn't trying to, like, like find Vision or, or something like yeah. WandaVision, like that white Vision or whatever. <clears throat> right, yeah. But yeah. So that's why I was joking earlier about the Mother's Day thing. Like, this movie is about her obsessive mm-hmm. compulsion for her kids. So this whole movie, like, and like you said, like, we thought, like, uh, Evil Strange was going to be, like, the big bad of this film. And, and that's why I said, like, I had misconceptions about this film because they, they totally threw me off from the trailer because I thought it was, like, a whole other, like, I thought it was just going to be, like, about Strange, like, like fixing the multiverse. Or, mm-hmm. Like, he called, like, from Spider-Man No Way Home, and, like, he fucked up and somehow, I guess, the repair shit. But no, this movie is about Wanda, like, just becoming a whole, like, I'd say beyond thanos threat because this is i she was a whole problem in this movie i'm telling you like we thought she was powerful like at the end of uh or i thought in wandavision obviously she was she was powerful enough to manipulate a whole town right but seeing her and she's got the dark hold which is so funny because it makes me think of the necronomicon (laughs) yeah (laughs) from army of darkness so it's so sam Raimi appropriate but um yeah, she's even more powerful now because the Darkhold has kind of like corrupted and manipulated her mind. So she's she's not even Wanda. She even said it too. She's like, Wanda's not gonna come collect uh, America. It's gonna be Scarlet Witch. So you already know, like, <laughs> when she starts dropping names like that, it's, she's gonna be a fucking problem. But yeah, she, so basically, she's like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take what I want, and you're basically gonna step aside. And that's like the the demons that I sent. That was me being reasonable. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like you don't want to, you don't want me to do it. So, and that's so funny because like America's like, oh, you told the one person right that was gonna help us, where she, and she's actually the problem. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> but yeah, and that um that whole battle with the uh, I forget the name of that that temple that they were. Oh, Kamartage. Um, Kamartage, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. Like seeing all like the wizards from. I would kind of wish we would have seen like some of like the Shang Chi people like from. 
whatever that yeah. image was, like like come like defend them or whatever. But but yeah, so all all the wizards like come to like defend uh, America and protect her from Wanda. So she shows up in this dark cloud of just like pure evil. Like she like you could just like feel like her power like emanating throughout the whole like like uh temple but you know, like she you could tell she's like the big villain of this and it's, it surprised me so much because it made it seem like she was like you said like gonna help dr strange like in this movie like as the as the side hero or whatever but she's actually like the entire villain of this movie and they even like they even say like later like oh she's not really a problem but actually she is right. like the big problem of this movie but um but yeah and then we get to like so she's she's fighting off you know, the strangest forces and stuff. And, and by the way, strange at this time is still not the sorcerer Supreme. It's still Wong, which I was surprised because I thought they would have made him, you know, the sorcerer Supreme, but I guess it's, I guess, I don't know. Is it like until you die or something? Or like, how does it pass down? Well, he, so Wong's the sorcerer. Uh, usually you have your own sanctum. Wong is just the sorcerer Supreme. He took over the ancient one. Um, and, I think that's appropriate too, uh, because Wong's characteristics match more of a Sorcerer Supreme than the Ancient One did, because Strange has a lot in common with the Ancient One. So Wong is, in fact, I think the rightful uh, Sorcerer Supreme. And I and I don't know if it should stay that way, but usually that's kind of a cool thought. Like Wong has is holding down the fort while Strange is doing other things that are, it's almost like a mercenary going out and discovering like new things and stuff. So I thought that's appropriate. But yeah, Wong's the Sorcerer Supreme of all. I say, yeah, he's definitely the more mature. I would say, <laughs> if it's like between Strange and and Wong, but I think at at the same time, Steven, I think his mind is what makes him powerful, right? Because he has like a such a like a surgical mind that he's always trying to learn more and gain more knowledge. So I think that's why, like, I, I wouldn't, I don't know, would you say Wong's more powerful or? Well, I I, I would disagree with with all that. I I'd say the most powerful thing from Steven is is. Is his suffering, honestly. I think uh, Stephen, yes, he's adept, whatever. But, you know, Stephen Grant from Moon Knight's adept to doing what he does and Mark Spector's adept to doing whatever he does and his wife and whatever. And they have different skills. But as we've seen, like, anybody could go to Karmataj and, like, learn things, right? But it doesn't make you great and they teach you kung fu and stuff like that like look at mordo mordo is apparently jealous but i think the fact that steven has been through so much suffering in every universe we could tell um and suffering. yeah and he is so lonely as well which i think he has a lot in common with america chavez because she's the only one of her kind in the whole entire universe so she could go wherever she wants i think that that uh gives you a humbleness also and i think uh just the spirit of strange is why he's lasted so long because every every movie every everywhere you see him he's he's always going through some type of crisis he doesn't catch a break mm -hmm. so i think really it's it's the luck that he has which is which is kind of a, a, a funny thing to say especially with something with magic um mm -hmm. and and you know i think that he kind of reminds me of iron man in a way too um you know he's been through shit times and stuff like that but there's something about about his his spirit you know that that mm -hmm. keeps driving him forward you know because black panther is also uh you know a billionaire tech wizard you know as well but they just have different characteristics for uh because they're soul well i was saying earlier i think i think steven kind of kind of reflects wanda that too also. yeah for it's sure kind of like a foil like yep how similar they are is very like interesting like because they both obviously have lost not well not in the way wanda's lost people but wanted to lose shit she just lost one guy <laughs> and she <laughs> barely knew her well i mean she lost her brother no i know i know <laughs> then, then, yeah i know <laughs> she I lost know. one android dude right and two no of course kids. <laughs> <laughs> but steven still has i mean christine obviously is alive but you could say that their relationship died right right so it's kind of like what would he be willing to do to get that back mm-hmm and there are other strangers we've seen, like Sinister Strange, that have kind of gone the route that Wanda has, right? Because we see Sinister Strange has the Darkhold, right. and he's killed other strangers just to get close to Rachel again. 
but so it's just so interesting it's so it's like almost like it's almost like the dagobah scene from uh star wars yeah it's like looking into yourself and not yep. trying to become the evil that you're trying to fight right yeah. but um but going back to the movie real quick so so he's trying to keep wanda from getting america and it's so interesting how they did this because it's such a sam raimi style like she's like she's like he puts her in this weird like mirror cage thing yeah. and it's like uh she's trying to like get through it and then she like puts her hand in it and it's like water and then she, like she's like pulling like everybody like through the water reflection it was so creepy it was kind of was, like the ring yeah like, tamara in a way <laughs> and then she comes out the gong and she's got this weird like grudge looking like mm-hmm. imagery it was so disturbing but it's definitely you could definitely say like the horror element uh, right of course in this in this movie yep so and it, and then like Stephen like even poses this question, which I thought was really, uh, really showed like how far Wanda's gone, because he was like, okay, well, what's gonna happen to all the other Wandas in the other universes, right? You, if you have the kids, what about their mother, right? Their their real mother, and then she doesn't like say anything. Like you could tell, like she, you already know, like what she's gonna do, <laughs> obviously. Right. Um, but then I think like what happens, like they push. She pushes them through the multiverse, and then like you can see like all the different. It's, uh, it kind of reminded me of like um, Spider Verse in a way. Right. Yeah. You get to see like all the different universes. Like there's like one where it's like all like illustrations or paint. There's like one with like dinosaurs and shit. And then um, they end up in this one universe that's like really close. I think it was like uh, I forget what it was like eight something, right? Yeah, it was like a utopia almost. I mean, that's where yeah. the group of you know who is there, right? The, yeah. You're talking about the final universe where they landed, the universe that they were in, where the Doctor Strange died. Oh yeah, by Thanos. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. That that that's a cool utopian idea. Um, especially the little notion of no one has to pay for food and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, that hit so hard to me <laughs> when she was like, "Oh, other universes actually." get shit for free you you guys are the only one that actually pay for shit i was like oh my god it probably has to do with the leaders that that's behind that world i guess um Mm -hmm. yeah that that, that was cool it was cool looking yeah and it's even like interesting like they actually like like the style of it actually feels like it's a different universe not just like you know oh it's like one that looks like ours but it's different right Mm -hmm. but like the traffic lights are like red like go in green for stop i thought that was cool like the way people dress and then we see of course uh uh <laughs> bruce campbell cameo oh yeah i know pizza papa <laughs> i know that was nasty that thing looked disgusting <laughs> i know i, I kind of wish he would have played the um what was it the um one of the uh characters he plays from the spider-man movie <laughs> he's like, I, I don't know like maybe the i know the usher guy <laughs> that would have been so funny i know well we did see a little um evil dead reference where he's fighting his own hand oh yeah that's uh, right. <laughs> so that that was nice to see that was a nice mm-hmm. callback yeah yeah, there's a lot of like uh, Evil Dead references. Right. It's like when we see like um, like Wanda when she's dream walking and you can like kind of see like the through the stairs she's like that point of view shot right. like the evil spirit. Um, but yeah, so they're trapped in this universe um, and they're trying to find a way back and then we get like a little exposition on like America Chavez like her childhood growing up and how she lost her her mother and then um, we kind of see like strange have like a flashback on like memory lane as they call it yeah. <laughs> like literally memory lane yeah 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 and um he's like we don't have time for this but it kind of shows like like what strange is going through like even though like he has like this big uh reality threatening event like deep inside he's, he's still thinking about christine right yeah, and it remind me of that what if as well that what if yeah. episode with those flashbacks yeah, when he, like when he kept losing her and then he yeah kept, like, yeah, he could never achieve her. That's the thing. He never could get what he wants, even if she's right there in front of him as well. So it's, uh, you know, again, it's an absolute point where I guess at one point they just will always break up too. Yeah. I think in different universes. It kind of sucked. I was like, at least it, like have like one universe where he actually like made it work out. <laughs> Pain is <laughs> old friend. I was like, damn. Um, yeah, that was that was interesting. And then, yeah. meanwhile, I think um, so she has Wong uh like captive and right. then, like she's um she's learning how to dream walk through the different universes and then um that's when she dream walks into the universe that they're in and that wanda and then she kind of like mind controls that wanda and then you can like see how far she's gone but also i thought it was like like when she stopped to, like hear her kids too like you can tell like you can tell like wanda is still in there like she has like innate love but it's it's kind of like 
it's only like love for her kids, right? So it's kind of like nothing else matters. And no vision as well. Like it looks like a different universe. There is no vision. It's weird. No vision. No, no Peter. So I, that's what was weird. I was like, how come like she didn't like try to like find a universe that had like vision or like or like Peter Maximoff or something? I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's kind of mm-hmm. like she was only like obsessed with her kids. Um. But what else happened after that? Well, then after that, um, we do get the scene where uh, Strange goes past the Sanctum Sanctorum as well oh, yeah. and sees mm-hmm. the Supreme Strange statue, which I thought was cool because like we get to see the statue, uh, like his costume design as well. Um, but lo and behold, who do we see? Uh, we see Baron Mordo. He's actually, I guess, oh. the, the Supreme Strange of, 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 or not Supreme Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme Sorcerer of that Supreme. universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is pleasant to see. I love that interaction too. That was so funny <laughs> when they hugged yeah. each other, like ha ha ha, <laughs> whatever. I knew you'd be back. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was cool because I I you know, but obviously Baron Mordo will always be the same, I guess, in different universes. Cause he has his jealousy, um, you know, which makes me wonder like what happened with Baron in six one six universe. Like we still never yeah, I was got into that any... too. Because I was like I was like, is this the Baron? Yeah. From- 616 but i guess it's their own version but yeah kind of the same just his hair got longer i guess so yeah yeah, yeah i wonder what happened to, to our bear more but maybe they were saving him for i guess dr strange 3 or something hopefully yeah but they go so they go inside and um they have a nice conversation about uh the book that they need to get and also a little bit of of like what's going on in the universe and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. lo and behold baron uh poison strange and uh, america also, chavez <laughs> yeah, yeah. what was the name of that tea too i just love these names it was like the sands or something i know <laughs> they were drinking <laughs> sand and they didn't know chamomile or some shit <laughs> they were drinking like that's the basically that, that's basically like old duncan duncan uh duncan oh donuts coffee or something <laughs> but yeah they show up they show up actually in a beautiful headquarters of and we'll reveal in a second because this is really cool and this is like probably the the best part for me seeing these characters here uh, but they were in a headquarters and and they were held captive in these glass cages what i thought was really cool and they also had like these braces uh things that reminded me a lot of actually ages of shield that they had like some of that mm-hmm. tech there like as well their powers like so they couldn't use like magic and shit yeah that was that was like those are really strong it's, it's funny to see after thanos how many things are stronger i guess even handcuffs are are, mm. are possibly in some elements stronger than thanos which is weird i mean after loki now we see one so but like yeah that was that was cool to see uh another version of uh of dr strange's long lost love there um, she was cold too. I was like, "Damn, bitch." <laughs> yeah, we see uh we see uh Christine, yeah. Dr. Christine, I guess. Just she has red hair, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm sure like I in somewhere like I'm actually blonde in a different universe. You're blonde. <laughs> and then so they're just dyed their hair black. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So what did you what did like you th- what what did you think about hearing some of the things the revelations um and and it's being confirmed that strange in in this universe and probably other universes through that conversation that Christine had with him that he is kind of like a destructive force like how did you think that made him feel at the moment too especially see trying to see some resolution to all of this I think in a way it it speaks to our humanity and how there's just some things in us that we can't change in a way. Like yeah. No matter what version of us that we are, no matter how much we try to change, there's like certain things. So obviously, Steven, you could say like it, maybe it's pride or maybe it's just like he has to be the one holding the knife, right? He always uh-huh. has to be the one to make the final decision, right? Right. So even even if the, you know, the methods uh, that he uses are, are morally gray, right? Yeah. So I wasn't surprised that he would do something like that. I mean, we've kind of seen like what he was willing to do in Endgame, like giving Thanos the the time stone, right? But like you said, that was the kind of like a different situation where like, he already knew what was gonna happen because right. we saw like through the different, uh, I guess like timelines and shit. But but yeah, like seeing that scene. So let's let's get into let's it, get to it. So yeah. we get to the trial scene and um and also like seeing the 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 Ultron bots was cool. I thought that was going to be Dr. Doom at first from, from Lee concept art. I was like, Oh, is Dr. Doom going to be there? That's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was really cool. I think I, it's too early for doom, but, but then again, we've seen other people. They movie, mentioned so. Ultron <laughs> as well. Yeah. That, I can't yeah. wait till you get to it. Yeah. So yeah. They're, and actually they look more closer to the, the Ultron bots from the, the comics. Too, so I thought that was cool, right. like seeing like them back. Um, so they're kind of like the security force for 
the Illuminati, which Illuminati. are confirmed in yes. this movie. Yep. So, and then I love when he's like, the Luma, the Luma, what do you think? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, he's, um, so I was like, yeah, it is confirmed. Like, a lot of people were, were theorizing it. But it's a different iteration from what we know from oh, the Oh, very different, yeah. Very different. So, you know, Mordo uh, puts him on the stand and he's like, uh, obviously, Doctor Strange is a big threat that we have to worry about. So you want to go take us through each member of uh, the Illuminati? Sure. First and foremost, one of my favorite ones that I'm glad to see is Agent Carter because we did one of yeah. our first series to review what was if? What If. Yeah, really crazy to see her there. I'm really, I'm wondering if, like, is that the universe that she went into after, like, the What If episode? Um, we also see Black Bolt uh, from the ABC series in humans which is great to see uh that actor anzol something uh play him again and i love the costume so much better so much better so comic accurate really beautiful uh monica rambeau as captain marvel the captain marvel which is uh interesting to see um because i think she's supposed to actually we were talking about yeah remember in our in our predictions episode yeah like who that was like because we thought it was like nova it was captain marvel but actually it it was captain marvel it just wasn't the captain marvel that we know, so it was Monica Rambeau, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, I, I I'm glad to see that actress as well back, you know. And then we also see John Krasinski <laughs> as uh, you know Mr. Fantastic, and I and I love seeing that costume redesign there. I was really shocked. That was completely fan casted. I bet everybody was like that jumping was totally off the seats because I've already seen like Photoshop images. Of, yeah, <laughs> of him as uh, as Reed Richards. I, well, first like. Rachel mentions like the Baxter Foundation. Yes. So I had yeah. a feeling we were gonna see something of the Fantastic Four. But then when he shows up, I was like, holy shit, like he looks so good. Yes. Like with the beard and everything, like and even the costume, like I because you know, I'm I'm still thinking of uh the old version two thousand five yeah. or two thousand six yeah. was Fantastic Four with the with the body suits and how they, they looked they looked okay for the time right but this suit looked like so like mcu style. mcu D- yep definitely so he looked really good and then um of course our final member oh professor uh, x i know Professor x who we yes. saw from show obviously but he like and then like the way they revealed him that like was, with that the, was sweet. the x-men yeah. animated theme and then yes got, like the the cool hover chair from yep. the cartoon he looks so good so i'm wondering if that's actually the the Charles Xavier from the I don't X-Men think so. series, or if it's like a different variant. He was from the animated. Wouldn't that be something if he was from like the animated? I don't know how the animated possible. series go. I mean, we've it's seen possible. Like, yeah, it's like a live action version. Because he's older here too, as well. I mean, right. that's that's interesting. Because they did play the theme song as well, and he has the chair. I'm wondering if that they, they took that. Because look at what if you know, and they're trying right. to reincorporate past uh, Marvel mm-hmm. properties. Elements, so so yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's cool. First mutant that we actually get to see in the MCU is actually Professor X himself. Uh, well, technically Wanda was, mutant, but though. they never so said. I but I think it's safe to say that like he's a mutant because Wanda was just like an enhanced person, uh, what they used to call her back then. Um, so yeah, I, I. How do you feel about about those those characters? Just seeing them in live action form, nonetheless. That was like the biggest like fan service <laughs> yeah <laughs> what if it was a big fan service too, you could say but but they look really good because i was wondering like how they're going to pull it off and you know we've had different iterations of the yeah. illuminati like obviously iron man i thought i really thought that we were going to see tom cruise's um iron man um as part of that i was and... hoping man superior iron man i was hoping it was either between superior iron man or beyonce and jay-z a part of the illuminati confirmed and will smith <laughs> <laughs> but no i mean like <laughs> tom cruise man i was from what I've been like hearing rumors and stuff, I thought he was gonna be there, and that would have made so much sense if he was there. That would have been so cool. But mm-hmm. I- I'm still satisfied with what I've seen. I mean, we got freaking Mister Fantastic. It's about time, know. you know. I know. So, it was so rewarding. I re- I really thought we were gonna see Loki too, but oh. we really didn't see him in this in this entire movie. Yeah, that's um, true. Because I really thought we were gonna see like him and Sylvie or something. I don't know, but yeah, I thought I thought it was cool and the way that they showed their powers. I kind of wanted to see more of Reed Richards. Because when we get Bro. to that that big fight with Wanda, like they just killed him off so easily, but I kind of want to see more. Yes. But I, it, like I said, it's too early to show, but it's definitely like in the works, right? That's for sure. Is, this is definitely like Kevin Feige's way of sprinkling the seeds for Phase Five, right? That yeah. We're see later down the line, maybe there's a bigger Fantastic Four, and I think at this time he has a, he mentioned he has two kids. 
Yeah, right. that's crazy. So. Yeah, they play a big part in the comics now. Right. I mean, but I thought that they would kind of build to it, maybe in, in a movie coming up, because John Watts apparently pulled out of the film. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, obviously, once you hear a director pulling out, that means that they're actually really working on it, so they're trying to get their bearings with the project. Mm-hmm. So, possibly, maybe we're going to see, like, an origin story of the Fantastic Four, or maybe, like, a season Reed Richards in the MCU. I don't know how they're going to approach that, because there is no Baxter building, apparently, in 616. Um, but we'll see. Yet. Yes, <laughs> yet. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So who knows? It it could be there, but right. um, but yeah. And then like, so they they go into this backstory how the Illuminati was founded, how Doctor Strange was also a part of the Illuminati, and how he was leading member, and how you know the the way the methods that he took to to defeat Thanos, and then we get a great scene that like, I thought this was like holy shit moment, like the way they showed Black Bolt's power, like when they killed Strange, and then. I love I've only that. seen like bits of it from the show, but it, first of all, all he said was one. I'm he said sorry. like, "What? I'm sorry, right?" Yeah. And it he calls like a fucking like supernova wave, oh, and you could like it. feel it like build up. Yeah. Like before, like like completely vaporized. Like, I felt scared. Shit. Yeah, I felt and really I, scared. <laughs> I was like, "Damn, you don't want to make him angry, like." Right. But that was cool how the how they showed each one. So then they're you know they're kind of like putting him on trial for like things he hasn't really done yet so i thought i thought it was so stupid too because they were he kept like trying to say like how Wanda's is a bigger threat and they're like they just brush it off and they're like no actually you're the bigger threat and then guess what they get fucked and murked by by wanda <laughs> like, yeah i hate like when that. that happens yeah they don't listen i was kind of mad about that but i know me too but, so the only one that survives from that is uh is Mort. and also let yeah let's just talk about it because like that whole fight sequence between wanda and at this point she's fucking like she's not even scarlet witch here she's technically like wanda because she's right. dream walking because she doesn't have the dark hold with her but she fucking murked everybody in this in this like the way she was killing people off like you thought thanos was was like savage man she was she pulled Reed Richards apart like he was fucking like, like paper mache and shit. Like, yeah. The, oh my god, the way she killed Black Bolt. That was the goriest. That's what I'm saying. That like people thought Winter Soldier, like uh, I mean Falcon and Winter Soldier, that death scene with the blood on the shield was bad. No, this is actually way worse. This was on steroids. Yeah. The way she yeah. killed. Um. Well, I think the only one who got it off easy was a, uh, uh, or not easy, but I think, um. Uh, Captain Marvel, I thought it was kind of stupid how she died because it's like, uh, statue falls on her. I wouldn't even like, see her as dead. Maybe she's not even dead. Like, I'm hoping she's not. Maybe she's I feel just. Like she could take on more than just a statue. Yeah. Like, she's fucking, like, like fought Thanos. Like, right. Places, so. But then, like, how they killed off um, Captain Carter. And also, I thought it was cool, like, how she, like, threw in the line, like, oh, I can do this all day. Oh, uh, I thought that so, it gave me so many callbacks to, to What If, man. I just, yeah. I, I wanted to stick <laughs> with that character more just to see what she's been up to, you know? She's got like a jetpack now and everything. I kind of wish she had her sword that she had. Oh what yeah, if. I'm wondering if this is the Captain Marvel though from What If, or if this is just mm, like a variant. A variant. Of, yeah, I'm wondering. I because obviously they are dead, so I don't know if they would go as far as to kill uh, Captain Carter right off the bat mm. in such a grotesque manner as well. I don't think so. I think she's probably just a different version of Captain Carter. Mm um you know because yeah, is definitely gone it's a complex <laughs> no it's it's like a complex thing like you change the timelines there's different timelines but there's also different universes as well so maybe mm-hmm. that has to do you know i don't know there's on different the... illuminatis and different universes too so. yeah yeah because you can't just it's not going to be like the cw flash show where like oh these characters right. are just in earth 2 next door or something i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure they're like gonna have neighbors or something <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sure they're gonna have their own like you know versions of these characters i would hope mm-hmm. you know it'll be weird like going through all that work just to visit your old pal mr fantastic you know so mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was that was really fucked up scene. Um, they died hella quick. They seemed like noobs. They were like noobs in the Call of Duty <laughs> <laughs> like lobby. It was it like you wonder if there was actually like Avengers or if they were like the only like superheroes. That I'm were pretty sure the they're just the Illuminati and 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 an Iron Man's plan like came into fruition, I guess. And then but they're just the Illuminati taking care of everything. Like it's just them. But that's it. The whole world like has droids. I'd say I, I, that makes more sense to me. Um, because you no, would think they should have got they should have got Hank Pym. Hank Pym. <laughs> they would have killed Wanda like. That. Yeah, I know. <laughs> From all the what if episodes. Oh yeah, I know, I know. 
if they would have got evil Hank Pym, no, nah, Wanda would have been gone. <laughs> Shit, man, I really wanted to see uh, yeah. Ultron Vision here too, like at least a mention of him or something. Oh, you know what's so funny? I love when like like she was walking inside the Illuminati building, and then she like she pretty much like mercs like all the right. Ultron buildings, and then you see like the Ultron head, and she like crushes it because mm-hmm. remember Ultron did kill her brother. So yep, like a little callback to to Age of Ultron. Great point. But yeah, that was that, that was such a great like scene man like just like they really didn't hold back on on the violence aspect of this movie and like man i mean they kind of did like show like or they, they held back on some things like you didn't see like Captain yeah and carter get split in half but you right. can tell just from the blood on the shield because it went through her right and then it, it hit that column thing and you could like see oh like, <laughs> like darth mauled uh, <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> she needs like savage oppressed to bring her back <laughs> I know that was crazy. I, I also um, like seeing like certain power sets. Also, like like you said, Black Bull. But I also like seeing Reed Richards stretch a little bit. Like I wanted to see how that CGI saying, looks. I kind of wanted to see more of like his yeah, power, like him stretching. And, that, and I'm like, how come they didn't show like the other Fantastic Four too? Like, or maybe they're just like. I wonder who who they will cast too because I heard that Emily Blunt like denied like that she wants to be a part of the MCU. But you have your husband a part of it now, so I'm wondering if she's like she did the Andrew Garfield thing where like mm-hmm. she's denying it until you know. Uh, until we you see her, need a human torch. You know where to find me. <laughs> well, maybe that. Yeah, I know. I think. I think a lot of people are saying maybe uh, Zach Efron might be human torch. A lot of people. He's not a bad actor though. Like a lot of people are saying maybe. Um, I kind of want like a human torch, like the same age as like Tom Holland, because I kind of want them to have like a buddy buddy thing that they have in the comics. Yeah, but that's the thing. You have like this old ass dude, John Krasinski, and yeah. his wife, and then you have like I don't know whoever this Boulder, and then you just have a young ass kid because they have to work together somehow. You know what I mean? Like, that's they get the rock to play uh, <laughs> the thing. They're gonna do that. Well, I swear they're gonna do that. You will so see. Stupid. You will see. They're gonna still do that. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> I promise. But moving on. Yeah. Um, so after that big fight, then uh, Rachel is kind of like. Uh, she was so stupid. Though. I was like, she still like doesn't trust Strange, but I'm like, you just watched your entire like Illuminati get killed in like five minutes, and you still don't trust. You, you still think he's the bigger threat than than this witch that literally like murked your entire crew. Like, come on. Now. And I felt but, like our Moon Knight spit like ah, ah, <laughs> to her. I was like, come on now. <laughs> but eventually, she does trust him. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. America vouches for him, and then they're trying to like uh, find this bolt that that universe is strange had for the book of ashanti which is basically like the biggest MacGuffin ever like mm-hmm. this, this is gonna solve all your problems like i wish i had that shit right uh, so i could figure out <laughs> technicalities for our podcast for a good video <laughs> right. streaming platform or something right. <laughs> um so the and then the like when wanda's chasing him like you could definitely see more of like that horror aspect like she's like you can see like her eyes are like really dark like, oh yeah too yeah um and then like they're looking back like every now and then and she's like just ripping doors open and shit um yeah get, they get to this one vault and then like he's like thinking like oh what would i what would i do right and he has the watch right the broken watch so it's like i thought that was like like cool little throwback so like strange is like pretty much the same guy in like every universe basically like yeah. he knows himself so well yep um but then they they eventually like they open the vault and then the the book is there um and then the book gets fucking wrecked in like five seconds by Wanda. And that was first so all, unsatisfying. I was like, how come they didn't close the door behind them? I, well, first of all, we, we even forgot to mention a little Zoom thing that's notorious to Sam Raimi that like this is a suspense and then a Zoom that goes oh, to yeah, each character. Yeah. Remember from so Spider-Man movies? Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, that was so stupid. Um, and, and that's basically, what is that? That's like between universes. So we've seen between or the end of time. And now we've seen between universes, what I thought. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very it's something. It's weird. It's like the power scaling of the MCU. It's like, uh, it's like you know, it's like where's the rock at when he says the power scale of the DCEU <laughs> or something. It's about drive. It's about power. <laughs> we stay hungry. We devour. <laughs> but that was that was uh, that part made me mad honestly because it, it, the book of Ashanti like it was fucking useless at yeah. that point. It was like they went through all this struggle to find it and then just like it burns in like three seconds. Yeah. But and then um so then Wanda finally gets America and then he pushes um Rachel and Strange to another portal and then they end up in a uh, evil Strange's universe. Which right. That was so funny. Like of all universes, that's the one you end up. And I thought that was the what if Doctor Strange was. At first, I thought it I was really him. I thought that was too. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't. It would have been weird if they did that though, because he's not really in that universe. He's just like in this sad, again, pain's old friend, this sad like crystal ball. Um, and he he is good though on what if you know. So here would have been yeah, kind of weird. He redeemed himself. Yeah. Time, so he wouldn't have been, and he would have had the uh, the thing with um, Killmonger and and uh, Zim, uh, not Zemo. Um, oh yeah, yeah, Zemo, right? Yeah. Oh, and and also Wanda Solo, at, at at that point, Wanda left. Uh, or you know, Scarlet Witch left Wanda's body. Um, which I might be stretching because sometimes you have to look deeper into films. I might be stretching, but I don't know. Maybe this is like a message to show you like she just disrespects herself because she leaves her like stranded in this like cross universe thing. She left her behind. <laughs> but it's like, you know, like we were talking about like Moon Knight. It's like I, I've been getting these like thoughts about like, wow, maybe you should love yourself. But I feel like Wanda's like lacking self-respect here or whatever. And like she just kind of like leaves herself oh, behind. Oh, you know, we forgot to talk about, we forgot to talk about like how, how like uh, Patrick's or uh, oh, how he dies. was trying to yeah. free like Wanda that from was her cool. mind. I love how they showed that. Yeah. Like, because it's like, she, he's trying to do like a Jean Grey thing where it's right. like, like, trap, like, uh, and it's funny because like, it's not like a mental block thing. It's like a, like a, like a magic thing, right? Right. He can only do so much. He can, he can like fight telepaths, but he can't fight magic. Right? Mm-hmm. So I, I love that. And then they just snap his neck. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was scary, actually. <laughs> like, there are, like, like sprink- I wonder, I'm, I really wonder how Scott Derrickson's version would have been if he directed this. Because this was, like, sometimes it felt campy. That's just Sam Raimi's style. It reminded me a lot of Drag Me to Hell. Um, but, yeah, like, that part was, like, really ugly. Like, just her face and stuff. It, it was really, like, you know, a little bit scary. Yeah. Also, I love when I love when he did his famous line where it's, like, just because somebody stumbles or loses their way doesn't mean... They're lost forever, right? So it was like a callback. That was sweet. Uh, yeah, that yeah. was. I, 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 you shall not pass. That's not the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> no, that was I think cool. That's a different guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was sweet. It's always great to see, uh, Sir Lancelot. I was gonna say, <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart. <laughs> so Sir I'm almost glad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's. I'm. I'm. St- I wonder if they're gonna keep putting him in other movies because he's getting old man so i don't think so this might be his last movies. yeah but i don't think they really need him for more movies he can just come in whenever they really need like a professor x but yeah yeah but moving forward um but moving forward so then yeah we see um haunted house uh <laughs> sanctum you know what's so funny like <laughs> This is so stupid. Like, like they open the door and it's just your room. <laughs> just you have my room. <laughs> Things are getting out of hand. Right. I know. I, I, if you guys don't know, I, la- I labeled my room uh, Sanctum Sanctorum because <laughs> all the collectibles and stuff. So, <laughs> FYI. It opens the door. You're just sitting at your desk with your podcast. Yeah, I know. It's like, oh! <laughs> like, the incursion really hit hard. <laughs> now they can't escape. <laughs> but, yeah, so... um. So yeah, they're trapped in this universe with uh with Evil Strange, and um you think he's gonna be a good guy at first, cause like the way, like he appeals to him, he's like yeah. he's talking about like his dead sister, like how that's the only thing that they really like don't talk about. Yeah, some facts there. I never knew about that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then um, so he's kind of like trying to like get him to like help him get back to the universe, and then we kind of see like, you know, this yeah, this this strange. I I wouldn't trust him. Mm-hmm. He's got like a little little iffy thing about them if you have long nails don't trust them (laughs) yeah (laughs) cut your nails good (laughs) um but yeah he's he got the dark hold in this it's so funny like the dark hold in every universe is basically just like the necronomicon (laughs) and it's like this yeah like absolute corruption but like um i love that battle between them though that was such a that was cool battle yeah that they had that was so good. Like some people didn't like that, but I like like the way that they were like the, the way they do magic in this movie. It was so like on ungrand- I kind of wanted to see more of it, right? Like how they did in uh, Infinity War when uh, like when he was fighting Thanos and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but what did you think about like seeing like like Evil Strange? Yeah, again, I thought he was so creepy from the get go. Like I knew I felt like something was off. Um, and uh, I feel like this this version of Strange is like what happens if he lets his anger get ahead of him. Uh, you know, some strangers they sacrifice something, but he said after Christine asked him that that question, you know, and, and he lied about it. You know, it kind of seemed like he was uh, scornful, you know, a little bit. Um, and he wanted to keep uh, Christine as well in the haunted mansion. <laughs> so to keep Vanessa, <laughs> to Vanessa. I mean, you know that that like 
it's interesting to see like how far a character will go on a deep path, uh, you know. And so, I thought this was really cool. The third eye has a lot to do. I'm pretty sure the third eye that he has will have to do a lot with like the third Doctor Strange movie as well, um, which goes to show that Doctor Strange never gets a break. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, that fight was great. Uh, I like the CGI a lot, like the lighting and stuff. I, I bet with you that was like so hard to film. Um, a lot of people don't think about it. But that that looked like with just the lighting and stuff. Um, and again, that's so like Sam Raimi to do like a fight scene that's like that. Um, so yeah, it was really fun to see. Yeah. And then, um, so then we kind of see like Wanda, she's, a uh, I forget the name of the place that they were at. It was like this dark temple. I forgot Basically, to, we yeah. find out from Wong that the dark hold right. was actually a copy and it was actually, uh, transcribed from this like dark, uh, temple. <laughs> I was about to say like Vader's castle, for <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> um so she goes there with wong and then um i thought wong died actually like for a minute because i thought like, oh yeah because she knocked him off the cliff and then like his hook thing didn't like i know uh, like hook and uh, he just fell off the cliff I'm like oh shit my man wong. <laughs> good riddance <laughs> <laughs> um but then like she's uh she's got america and she's doing like this this ritual thing where like she's like absorbing her powers yeah and then Strange does this. I thought this was fucking cool as shit. But yeah. I was kind of confused about it. Um, so he basically, he dream walks. Uh, but Christine is like, oh, but don't you need to be in your universe to dream walk? He, and yet, don't you have to be alive? And he's like, who said anything about being alive? But this part confused me. So he, he dream walks into, so they bur- in the beginning of the movie, they buried uh, the first Doctor Strange that we see, right? right. The ponytail Doctor Strange. He buries him in... Uh, universe uh 616 right so he basically like our strange 616 strange dream walks into that body but it was kind of confusing because like don't you have to have a dream to dream walk <laughs> or like don't you have to be alive i don't know it, it was dark confusing. magic that's what it is that's dark that's magic, what corrupt, guess, corrupted but... him at the end of the day is that probably plot hole that i'm gonna look over <laughs> So apparently, like it was against like whatever their gods or their magic, like, like it's like you can't dream walk a dead body or something. So all these like evil spirits come out, mm-hmm. and then uh, he tells Christine like, "I need you to be here." Like when they come, I'm like, what the fuck is she gonna do? Like, what if she didn't have that candle cannon thing? <laughs> like, yeah, what was she I know. gonna do? Fight off these evil spirits? I was like, <laughs> right, yep, and they were attacking have, like, her. A crucifix or some shit, like, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that I part was like, badass though. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, then he gets like control of these demons and shit. I thought that was cool as shit because like he makes like a cape out of them. That was shit. cool. Yeah. Yeah, kind of made me think of like what if strange is like how he like like he sucked up all those demons and like he was he was like, able to make like like power out of them. And shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then we get to the final fight uh, between Wanda and well, this is technically dead zombie strange right, right. <laughs> that we see in the trailer. Um. And then my man Wong came back, and then like he just <laughs> it's funny like the the golem looking guys are like looking down. It's like oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> holy shit, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> yeah. It's Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wong. <laughs> um, but what do you think of that fight between um Wong and Shrine? Because I was I thought that was like that was so cool how they did like the the flying evil spirits and shit well you know i felt like at some points uh almost strange got the upper hand because in a way i mean he still was using dark magic so i felt like fight fire will fire in this mm-hmm. situation so I, th- I thought it was really cool and again that's such like a metal strange that's so like badass i don't know and in, in the most Hot darkest ways strange. yeah it's it's like <laughs> And and uh, they try to, like, you know, fight her together. But she's just still too powerful. Like, I'm wondering if she's actually, like, that more powerful than Thanos with the stones. I don't know. Um, I, at this point, I was, like, so over Wanda. Like, I really wanted them to defeat her. Um, and, and I was, like, I felt sad for America as well. She kind of, like, was about to accept her fate, you know. So, but what did you think about it? Well, it's interesting because like, he he does the same thing to Wanda that he did to that first demon in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> he oh, basically yeah. like traps her with right. the demon, and he puts like a big sphere around. I think that's like his signature move. Right, is just like trap people in a sphere. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he did that in what if? So he was like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, but I thought that was cool, and I like yeah, they they're trying to trap her, and then like there's that little moment between him and America, and. It seems like the only option is like just to kill her and take her power, but he's 
he's a um, he's a different strange right mm-hmm. and he, he wants to prove that sir he's like you kind of have to trust me he's like i'm not like those other strangers like i i compromise right which we saw obviously in infinity war right he didn't right. kill um tony and peter he kind of made the ultimate sacrifice in a different way so i thought this was interesting it was kind of like uh it, it reminded me so much of like the mandalorian or like the witcher or like the young the young powerful person like finally discovers their power and like <laughs> it's such a trope now but yeah it's cool to see um so apparently she like discovers her power all of a sudden she's like more confident now mm-hmm. Because uh, she has that affirmation, <laughs> so that's all she needed <laughs> was that affirmation <laughs> to to finally beat this this fucking witch that has like murked millions of people. <laughs> right, I know <laughs> she's worse than Thanos. He just wanted to wipe out half the fucking our universe, <laughs> not everybody. She got that affirmation. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but that was cool though, like how she she kind of like unlocked her power, and she was like, "Damn, she was fucking punching Wanda through like." 10 universes i was like damn holy mm-hmm. shit but she finally um I, I like how they did defeat wanda though it's like the only way they were going to beat her right is through herself so they kind of show her herself right and they show that wanda that she took over and how like the kids Got are like afraid of her because yeah. she's so far gone now they don't even recognize her right she's, yeah she's literally become a monster at this point yeah. and i thought that was like a really like I I, I can't find I felt kind of bad because like all the shit that she went through in WandaVision, you know, all she wanted really was just like uh, her kids, you know, just to be there. But I think at that point she realized like, yeah, I'm no longer I'm no longer Wanda. I think like the Scarlet Witch persona has just kind of like taken over my life where like I've, I'm just I'm not redeemable at this point. But what do you think about like seeing that scene? Like, with the kids? You know, I honestly think like. And it has a lot to do with, like, my overall thoughts about it. But, like, I like the scene because it was very, like, you know, it revealed something to her. And I thought that was powerful, too. And just the performances and stuff and the way they filmed it. But, like, at the same time, too, I feel like from, like, the casual viewer, um, it kind of seems... Like, if you just watched WandaVision and then you just watched this, I feel like it kind of seems stupid that, like, she went on this tirade and, and, and tried to, like, kill people basically worse than thanos she's basically like a a worse villain than thanos right this could have easily have been an avengers level threat um and to see her like like to feel sorry for her for her imaginary friends i felt like it's kind of hard to like suspend your disbelief like in that aspect because i was just so angry with her um as as like a hardcore mcu fan um it made me even more angrier because I was like, thinking, they, they did all this stuff in WandaVision. I felt like now it, it completely got diminished because um, I thought there was some good to her. You know, I thought that that revelation she had um, that she was going to be alone um, and, and as she had to deal with that, I thought, OK, we're done with that. And then they had that end credits for WandaVision. And now we have her as a major villain. And so it's not my favorite, like, characterization of Wanda. Like, I felt like they could have did something else with her storyline in this movie like possibly make a different type of movie that that makes more sense towards her character because this seemed like way more drastic than basically you learn nothing in one division and you said okay now i am the villain now i'm gonna be even worse and then now here we are um i wonder why they did that but i did like this little resolution i felt like two things number one uh this kind of like uh makes her surrender further and kind of like shows her her ways without killing her i wonder if there was a different character uh besides america chavis i wonder they would just kill her they should have brought my man jake lockley to take her ass out Shit. Uh, <laughs> but number two uh that ending actually makes me more afraid of her because they couldn't beat her at all so they at who could beat her is herself but just like saying some words you know so it's like those two things I, I got from it, honestly. I My wasn't. Next question yeah. is Do you think she's really gone, or do you think, like, we'll see her again? Um, she, really, she really just, like, ended it. Is the elephant heavy, baby? Then you know I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, I think I think for sure <laughs> she's coming back. I, 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 you know, when you see, like, these, these type of deaths, there's no confirmation that she's actually dead you know i i think she's coming back for sure and i i don't know to what extent but 
you know, we still have White Vision out there. Maybe White Vision's like working somewhere in Mexico on a churro stand. I don't know where he's been, but you know, we have to see them reunite, you know, in some way or form because they're both changed as well, White Vision and and Wanda. So I wonder now, are we going to get a next? iteration of like wandavision where like now it's rekindling love when these two people are different or or suffering through this trauma and how will they actually find love again i could see that being very uh you know very compelling to like make another series of like wandavision or like a movie so i think i think she's coming back but what do you think of the whole thing that interaction and plus do you think she's coming back well going back to the interaction i i thought that was really it's so funny because it's like it's like look literally like looking at yourself, right? Yeah. Like that moment where she looks at Wanda and Wanda looks at Scarlet Witch, and it's like she's she's peering into her soul, but at the same time, it's like it's like a the little bit of Wanda that she had left, that was what she was looking at, right? Not just that it was actually Wanda, <laughs> but it's also the Wanda before she became Scarlet Witch, right? She just wanted to be a mother. She just wanted to have a life that was normal, right? Um, so I thought that was, I thought that was heartwarming, but it's such a shame because it was such a tragedy. She was so far gone at that point. Like, I don't think anything could really like redeem her, but I love that the last line that she gave her was like, know that they'll be loved. Right. So at least she had that, like she finally, I mean, it took her a while to understand that because even Wong was saying like, aren't aren't you happy that other universes like have their kids? And she was like, no, fuck you. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) But she finally, I guess, understands it coming. I think she had to hear it from herself. Right. Because I think she was so stuck. I mean, it, you could also say maybe the dark hold was like corrupting her a lot. I think, yeah. But I think for the most part, she only wanted to hear what she wanted to hear. Right? Yeah, true. So hearing it from herself really like opened her eyes and made her realize like, yeah, I, this is probably not the way that I should be going about things. A little too little too late, mm-hmm. like 30 bodies later. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at least she, you know, she has that resolution with herself. And, um, and it's funny because it's like, you know, seeing Evil Strange too, it's like their their ambitions were so similar, but in the end, like they they kind of like destroy themselves in a way. Um, but will I think I'll we'll see her again possibly? Um, I don't know because uh, that building looked really heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if, if we do see her, like if she is dead, it's possible. I mean, the multiverse is big, so maybe we could see another version of like maybe that. That Wanda that we saw in that universe, oh, maybe yeah, that's huh. the Wanda that comes back, right? Because she's still good at that point, right? She's not beholden to the Darkhold, and Strange destroyed all the Darkholds in every universe. Or Wanda, sorry. Wanda destroyed every Darkhold in every universe, so she can't be corrupted. So if she died in this movie, um, which I highly doubt because Marvel tends to bring people back. Um, you know, I, actually, I think she is gone because I think in a way, I think I like to think that she was also thinking about Viz at this point and how she kind of wanted to join him i guess um so at least if she couldn't have her kids she could be with biz right and her brother but yeah i think it's possible we could see her back maybe through like a variant um or maybe even like a time reversal thing maybe we'll see Mm. like a time jump and back to her but i think for now i think her story is kind of done i think i think phase four was mainly like her journey yeah um so they might take a rest from that as well and then maybe phase five will be like more about like the, the x-men and the fantastic four so i think i think slowly we're kind of like leaning away from all the original avengers that we've seen from phase one and two um but yeah so then going back to the movie so you know wanda's dead at this point or <clears throat> she kind of like climaxed on herself but uh. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> so then uh they take america back to uh the temple and they're kind of like training her to be like a like a magician or a sorcerer uh, but i kind of wish we would have seen like her parents at least like i, I kind of wanted her resolution to be like about like her maybe she finds her parents i know strange was kind of cold about it. he's like you'll see him one day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like yeah good luck <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. kind of like that dad that like like <laughs> gets milk and then says he'll be back but he never shows does it <laughs> But that was cool to see her there. Um, that was nice to see. I'm glad. I, I bet we'll see more of her later on. Perhaps not even something involving Doctor Strange. Maybe it's just like, uh, who knows? Maybe she'll get her own show or something. I mean, that'll be an expensive show, um, you know, different universes and all. But, uh, you know, she's a young, basically a young adventure, I'd say. And there's, there's mm-hmm. a lot of those 
brewing, you know, with all these spinoffs and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. So what did, what did you think about? Um, so well, before we get to the end credit okay. scene, but we get to the scene where it's like uh, he's he gets he's walking down the street and then he starts screaming and then he has <laughs> the the third eye. Right. Is that the eye of Agamotto? No, 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 no. No, that's just oh. that's just from the Dark Holds uh, corruption. Um, which the dark hold was erased, but I guess the magic isn't, um, and the temple was destroyed, but the magic isn't. So I wonder how that's going to affect him later on, or will he know the secrets forever? Or perhaps he'll like overcome them and like, uh, knows how to control it. And like, because again, uh, he, he has so much similar with the ancient one, you know, they, they tapped into dark magic, uh, into the dark hold. So, I mean, and that, and that ending was typical Sam Raimi. Uh, those like type of endings where where like the character People doesn't never die. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, yeah, and and it kind of reminded me of Spider Man too. Like the raindrops are falling on my head. <laughs> he's walking. He's like ah, <laughs> and he just like is in pain. But right. you know it, it. That that was like really sudden. I was like oh shit, and and it just ended. I mean, but thankfully we. The end credits really threw me off because, like, oh, so you had a headache, and then what? The next day, you just decided to well, walk again. They made it again. seem like like the dark hole was like gonna be like an evil ending, and then they he was like all lighthearted and shit when he, when he well, I guess we should get the yeah. End so the end credits, he he meets with um Cindy something. Uh, Cindy. Sonara, right? I think it was Clea. Clea, I was to say, yeah. Cindy, who the fuck is Cindy? I was to say Mortal Kombat character. Cindy Lou? <laughs> there might as well be Mortal Kombat X characters at this point. <laughs> Devora. But, um, yeah, so we see uh, Charlie Theron and, yes. uh, as Clea, her introduction into the Marvel Universe. Yes. So that is Doctor Strange's wife, I believe, in the comics, and also Dormammu's, I believe, daughter or niece, I forget. Something like that. It's confusing, but, but definitely a love interest, and that's that's great because... That bitch Christine was like, uh uh-uh. uh. So I'm glad I'm glad he <laughs> moved on. I mean, that's great. And then plus Charlize Theron um playing her. I, I always wondered, uh, like some celebrities that are well known, like who will they play in the MCU? Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm surprised that she's playing this character. That's great. So I am sure she's gonna be really impactful. And I wonder if she's gonna have her own spin-off eventually, because you know how these things are kind of like handing down uh the baton. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Well, what what did I you think about that though? Or the book of Ashanti, whatever the fucking MacGuffin is of the day. The book of Eli. <laughs> yeah, yeah, book of Ashanti. <laughs> um. Yeah. So we get so that. Yeah, I was confused about that because they she like he meets her and then like she, I guess she opens like the dark. That was cool. That looked cool. Yeah. That was from Dormammu's. Then, you know. Yeah. That that's Dormammu's dimension. And, yeah. Um. He opens the eye thing. And he's he's so casual about it, so I was like, is the dark hold like evil or is it like just good now? Like I I, I was confused about that. Yeah, the t- well, it's confusing because he was like, ah, ah, and then all of a sudden it ends, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it comes back where it's like, uh, you know, he's walking out again. So I'm like, oh, I guess I don't know what happened here. I don't know, you know. It would have made more sense if he's wearing the same shirt, and then she comes up, and then he's like kind of like distraught, but like he says okay, something like that. It was really like pacing wise, it was weird, but her power set was cool. I like that like. Like ripping uh that sword thing yeah that was really cool I she was one of the eternals for a minute because the way like, her outfit look i thought she was like one of the eternals oh uh, yeah yeah that, that's the thing like i don't know he was it's that was such like a doom moment where he's like smiling like this and getting ready to go to hell it, it, that was cool though i can't wait i have a feeling we won't see another film for a long time because benedict cumberbatch has confirmed that he's taken a short break out of uh, of acting um but he says he's willing to come back to another dr strange film if if the script is right apparently and again the contracts are different with, Mar- with marvel studios now so i don't know i i hope we do see something because i'm a big fan of dr strange um and i like the ending um, and also that character that we got to see. So, yeah, but all in all, uh, I want to know your thoughts on, uh, like, how does this rate for your favorite MCU film? And also, where do you think we'll go next? Like, we have Miss Marvel coming up. Uh, so where do you think that magic aspect of the MCU will go next? Well, I think overall I would rate it an 8 out of 10. Um, wasn't my favorite. Marvel film, but I definitely, I thought it definitely subverted my expectations, like I said. Like, I expected it to be, like, a different story, mm-hmm. but actually, I thought it was really interesting how it played out, especially, like, with the whole um, Scarlet Witch thing. So, yeah, I would say out of 10. Where do I think the Mar- the Marvel Cinematic Universe goes next? With, with, with uh, magic well, and with stuff. The, yeah. the sorcerer stuff. Um, I mean, obviously, they've planted America Chavez 
uh is probably like she'll probably like follow all these wizards like probably she'll be like learning from like wong and shit um but <laughs> it wouldn't be funny if they had ned there like like ned from from spider-man and he's learning like all that shit too that's right like he, had, he yeah. had so much potential as a wizard <laughs> when he opened the portal he's like hmm, interesting that's right they should i mean my young ward <laughs> ward oh wait what what what, what, what? ward <laughs> did you say no, ward from ward. iron fist <laughs> not that word <laughs> well then again yeah too because we also have shang chi shang chi exactly have, yeah. um you know that's still like a mystical thing too yeah um and he's with wong he's right with the wong crew now um but yeah i really think like you said earlier like i think like moving forward i think i think a lot of these younger heroes are definitely gonna be stepping up uh to take the place of these avengers because I, th- I think like now like i said like we're kind of we're kind of concluding. We're wrapping up some of the Avengers, like the main Avengers, like, like, like I feel like Wanda, like Bucky and Falcon, they were they were still Avengers, but they were kind of like side Avengers. Yeah. And now they've kind of wrapped up their stories, mm-hmm. and and we still haven't even seen Loki yet. So that was weird. I thought we would see him like one more time, but that's you know for Loki season two. But right. Yeah, I definitely think like um, moving forward, like like. The Miss Marvel, uh, Kamala Khan, like all the younger hero now, and we still have like um, Ironheart too, that we're gonna see eventually. So she'll probably play like a younger, like female actress. So I think the the baton is getting ready to pass down, but you know we st- and we still have obviously the Fantastic Four could easily replace the Revengers or <laughs> Revenge Avengers. <laughs> uh, we're not the Revengers, we're the Avengers, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, X Men definitely has potential yeah. to to you know take the spot too. So Marvel Marvel's definitely in a good spot right now. They we're definitely it's it's becoming more of a universe now. Well, it's already it's already established universe after how many movies now. So we yeah. kind of we kind of have like a feel now of like what this universe feels like, right? So now it's just like we're getting into the nitty gritty. We're we're pulling out all these other characters, right? That you know might be overlooked right like moon knight obviously and then um yeah i really want to see like how they're gonna if they could incorporate the defenders down the line but who knows but tell me your thoughts because i really want to know you as a as a marvel and do these how how do you think it'll play out for the next couple years well uh, yeah i think that they're shifting gears for sure for phase five i think that's long overdue to go to phase five honestly um especially with all the disney plus stuff uh included i think yeah they're shifting gears for phase five and also it's a complicated task because you have uh movie studios acquisitions you also have the partnership with sony and now sony kind of has taken the reins i think uh <laughs> i think jared leto will lead the MCU. Taking the reins. <laughs> right. No, Jared Leto's Morbius will, will be the next Iron Man. Oh, he'll... definitely. Yeah, definitely. He'll no, be the next uh, Superman, Batman. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's going to be a really uh, different take on MCU. I mean, there's still this familial tone that you get from, from the MCU, which I love and I think everyone loves and, and also the designs and stuff. But I feel like, you know, everything is, is passing down the baton, as you said earlier. And I think that the MCU will uh dive more further into different aspects of genres as well i think that this was a great uh you know great uh uh first take on i guess horror elements and certain gory aspects as well violence and stuff um i don't know if it's like suited for disney plus um because i defenders is there but you know i Will they actually make something super gory next, like with Blade? I wonder. I don't know what it'll be rated, you know? Um, yeah, they're, I mean... They also have um, Secret Invasion, too. Secret Invasion, right, exactly. Like, And also, the thing is, we've barely seen much of Captain Marvel. Like, I feel like we're going to see a lot more that has to do with, like, this cosmic energy type of, like characters uh getting into the mix i mean obviously we have kamala khan that her powers are apparently brought from like kree technology they did that character redesign for her um and then we have the marvels coming up um and then i think we're gonna see uh which i think will be awesome because that's what i'm excited for because everyone did forget about iron man at this point like a lot of people was not talking about him anymore i can't wait to see callbacks of like uh, iron man through iron heart and armor wars that no one's ever talking about that ever um and will falcon and a winter soldier like that i don't know what's gonna happen i mean he's just captain america at the end of the day i don't know what else you could do um i think 
they're trying to do like an expanse right now. That's why everything seems so huge. And like, like even Thor, Rag- Thor, Love and Thunder, we get to see uh, like Greek gods there, like Mount Olympus or something. Like everything's expanding. Mm-hmm. I wonder when we're going to get to the point where after you expand it, where will we settle to kind of get like that, that feeling of like phase one again, where it's just these characters doing their own thing. Right. And we're not really trying to contribute anymore. And, and some things feel like that. Like anyways, like Moon Knight or, or even this movie, no matter how insane it was, it did feel like it was his own thing, to be honest with you. Like that's how I felt at least like you did see some different characters, but it felt like its own thing. Um, if anything, this contributed showing people multiverse and then giving them a lot of violence. So I think I think we're in a good spot right now. And, and I'm really glad to see uh, younger actors uh, get to portray all these awesome characters as well. So, yeah. So those are my thoughts. I, I give I give the movie. Honestly, I'm going to be a Debbie Downer here, um, but I'm, I'm I give it. I give it like a solid six. I would have gave it a seven if, but Beyonce and Jay Z weren't a part of the Illuminati. So, so I, I, I give it like a oh, six well. for its realism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, good thing we live in a in a world where we can have a contrasting opinions. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep my damn reading out your damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but. I, I mean, I can agree. I think there was some elements I think could have been better, but I think overall, I think I was more impressed with uh, with the movie. I, I I think my expectations. I think your your different. Your expectations were high and they just went low. Mm. Mine were low, but they went high. So I think that's why we have the screen that we have it. But uh, I think the movie over, overall was great, and I can't wait to see what Marvel's delivering for Phase Five. I know Kevin is definitely in the works, um, more so than. I have no idea what Sony's gonna put out next year. Well, obviously Spider Verse, but that got delayed too. Oh. So, who really knows? Six what's dudes fucking up a teenager. That's what they're pulling up together. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. But uh, thank you guys for sticking around for our review. If you made it to this this far of the video, we appreciate it. Um, we also have our Moon Knight uh, season one review out already. If you haven't watched it, um, but yeah, definitely check out all the great content that we're gonna have uh, going forward. Uh, we're gonna have our Halo season one review pretty soon, yeah. and then we're gonna start getting into Obi Wan, which I'm really excited for because we're gonna do episode by episode uh, weekly reviews for that. And then we got a lot of uh, goodies sprinkled in yeah. along the way since yeah. our finals are coming to a close, and we're gonna have more time over the summer to do more episodes for you guys. So thank you for sticking around. Uh, make sure you're following us on Anchor. YouTube, uh, our Instagram socials are in the description, and you can also follow us on Spotify and Apple Music. But thank you again, guys. Happy Mother's Day, and until then, thank you for having lunch with us. Happy Mother's Day. See you guys. Happy Mother's Day.